So I am, I am kneeling here in a garden with Thomas, and Thomas, most of us know you from, from Seabright Gardens, and instantly we think of hostas and all these other amazing plants you have. Right. But you also own a company called Mid-America Garden, and where you do irises, right? right? Right. So we're gonna specifically be talking about dwarf irises today. First of all, I want, I want to know what, what are the major differences, if any, from what we're used to, the taller irises in these dwarfs? Okay, well, the little dwarfs are just what it says, dwarf. They don't get any taller than 15 inches. They're wow. technically classified from 8 to 15 inches. And there's another class of uh, irises called miniature dwarfs that are 8 inches and less. Wow. So the big difference for these is, is basically the size. The flowers are smaller, the stems are shorter. Um, they seem to increase a bit quicker. They're more winter hardy. They're hardy down into like 40 below. My goodness. Uh, they were bred from the tall bearded irises of the day back in the, I think in maybe in the 40s is when they, when they started working on it, or maybe the 30s. And they crossed them with a species from Siberia called Pumala. And then they just kept crossing those progeny back and forth together and developed this class of dwarf uh, bearded irises. And they, they're real workhorses. They bloom very heavily. They completely cover themselves in bloom, as you right. can see. Um, they don't get really tall, so you don't need to worry about wind damage or, or heavy rains uh, destroying them. You don't need to stake them or anything don't need, to, don't need to stake them. The blooms hold up better to, uh, um, you know, the, the weather, we and weather think, and yeah. where we get lots of rain here in the spring. Well, and in that amount of time, of, of you go back to the time that they first started with them, really the amount of selection has become massive. There's a lot of different selections of these. Right, right. and uh, there's lots and lots of colors of these, and they're not known really well for, for some reason or other, but um, then there's one thing that's very specific in them, and that's what's called a spot pattern in the falls, and you can see it in a lot of them. Uh, where there's okay, actually just for clarification for me, by falls you mean this part? Correct. What? Okay. Correct. The, pl the, the part that hangs down is the fall and the top part is the standard. Okay. And on, like on this seedling, for instance, you can see, I'm talking about spot pattern, as you can see the blue. Right, the, right. The blue spot. That's reminiscent of the species that they were bred from. Um, the pumulate, there was a spot in that and that's been carried on into it. Into all the these progeny years. of it. Correct. And then, you know, how long does it take when you're when you're growing these and testing them? Uh, you grow them from seed. Correct. How long does that take? How long oh, the process? Uh, th the things I, I pollinate this year, I'll harvest the seed in August. I'll plant it in October. It'll germinate through the winter. Um, next year, I'll I'll plant it out of the pots into the soil in the garden, and it will bloom the following year. Wow. So two years from. From really, so it's not like you know a ten-year investment. No, no, that's that's no. amazing. And then, how do you choose? What is it that when you look at those new plants blooming that have never bloomed before? Right. What is it that you look at to choose from and say this is the one? Well, we're looking for something different. Is number one. Um, and if it doesn't, if it's not different, then it's not worth right, uh, right. moving forward, or an improvement. Uh, we've been working for a long time on brightening the colors. The colors were weak when we first started. Now the colors are. Some of them are actually neon colors, they're really intensely. We've been working on ruffles, you can see there's lots of ruffles coming right. on these now. We've been widening the petals, the old uh, old varieties had really narrow uh, petals. We've widened them out so they look fuller. Uh, we've worked on bud count, nice. because the Pumula species that they were bred from had one bud, so now we want to have at least three buds on a stem. Uh, sometimes there's four and even up to five buds now, wow. so we're still increasing that. And then, th do they have any special, you know, a disease problem or anything we have to pay attention they're, to? They're not anything different than what the, the tall beardeds that you're used to growing. Um, you have to worry about maybe slugs on the right. foliage early right. in the spring. The slugs do like iris foliage. So that's pretty much it. Um, you want to plant them in a really sunny spot, at least a half a day of strong sun. And you want to put them in well-drained soil. Uh, they, they're happy in a, happier in a succulent garden they are, than they are in an English really? garden. Wow. Think Mediterranean plant, that's, right. that's where, where they want to be. Um, summer dry is totally fine, very little water in the summer. Wonderful. And plant them so the rhizome is right at the surface level. You plant them too deep, they don't bloom. And so then what if people say, okay, I'm sold, I want to get some of these, I want to look at them. Yep. How do they go about doing that? Well, we can take care of that too. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we've been putting out an iris catalog, a full color iris catalog called uh, Smith America Garden. It's 70 pages. Wow. And it has all the bearded classes of irises in it. We probably about 300 different uh, dwarf irises in the catalog. Nice. 
and uh, we have a website, it's uh, Mid America Garden, and it's beardedirisflowers.com. They can go to that, and we have a shopping cart, and uh, just add up. <laughs> yes, exactly. And we also have uh, potted uh, dwarfs for sale here at the garden at Sold Through Seabright Gardens. Well, there you have it. So you're saying to yourself, I want to get some more information on these and maybe get some from my own place. Go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to both places. We'll click you over to Mid America and we'll click you over to Seabright as well. Find out what you need there and pick it up. Thomas, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you. Thank you.